Welcome to section 3.6, Inverse Circular Relations. Here we'll be asked to find an angle given a ratio. At the end of this section, you should be able to answer these questions. What is an inverse relation versus an inverse function? How do we distinguish between inverse trig relations and inverse trig functions in our textbook? What is the relationship between the inverse cosine function and the arc cosine relation? What do we mean by principal value? How do we find solutions to the arc cosine relation graphically, numerically, and algebraically? Well, let's look at the problem we're being faced with. If you recall from the previous section, we demonstrated that for any uv coordinate on a unit circle, the u value would be equal to the cosine of the angle we travel through to reach that uv point on our unit circle, and the v value would be equal to the sine of the angle we've traveled through to reach that point on the unit circle. So if we chose this point here, we needed to travel along the circumference or through this angle to reach that point u comma v. If we draw a reference triangle for that angle, we would see that the adjacent side is u and the vertical side is v, and since it's a unit circle, the hypotenuse is 1. So the cosine of our reference triangle angle would be u over 1, which is just the u coordinate. Now, if I ask the question, when is that cosine of the angle equal to point 3? That's the same as asking, when is my u coordinate equal to point 3 on my unit circle? And if we look at the unit circle, we can see that the first time the u coordinate is point 3 is for this angle. However, there's an issue because that's not the only place on the unit circle where the u coordinate is point 3. We also have this point down here in the fourth quadrant. So we have two answers. In fact, we have more than two answers because we could say that our fir the first time is a certain angle x, but we also have coterminal angles with x that provide an answer to the question, when is my u coordinate point 3? We also have the point down below, which we can see by symmetry is actually just the negative of my initial reference triangle angle. So we start with one angle. We see that there's some symmetry to get a second angle. And then we have all their coterminal angles as possible answers. This section will address how to express all those possibilities. Here's another way to look at the problem. If I graph the cosine function, as I have here, and then I say, when is that cosine function equal to point 3? If I draw a line here at point 3, we can see that there are an infinite number of times when point 3 is equal to the cosine of x. So we need a way to describe without trying to list all, in, all the infinite solutions here. If we can describe the pattern to these solutions, we can save ourselves a lot of ink or lead. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the fact that if we look at simply the principal branch solution, so our principal value for our solutions here, that's the area in green on our graph, and we recognize that due to symmetry, 
the solution in our principal branch has a solution on the other side of the y-axis exactly the same distance away. So if we have an answer on the principal branch, we'll have the negative of the answer as well. Automatically, we've just generated two solutions. Now, from here, what we will do is we recognize that from those two solutions, every other solution is some multiple of a period away. So if I start with this as my initial solution, if I travel one period up and down, I arrive at another solution where my second solution is just my first solution plus a period. And if I take the other solution that I gained by symmetry here, let's call that one A, my next solution for A is exactly one period away from my first solution. Where B is just A plus a period. So I can start with my first solution generated off my principal branch, come up with a second solution through symmetry. And once I have those two initial solutions, I can then add or subtract periods to obtain all my other solutions. In a nice, concise form, we have a formula that gives us exactly that relationship. This formula states that our infinite solutions, which we're going to call the arc-cosine relationship, come from the symmetry, positive and negative values of our inverse solution, the inverse cosine, plus periods of our function, the 2 pi period for the length of a period. Note that for the arc cosine, all our answers will come in opposite pairs, plus their coterminal angles. Okay. That initial value that we get off the principal branch is called the principal value. 